Many of us watched Wednesday afternoon as the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. was taken over for the first time since the War of 1812. As the Virginia battle flag, commonly called the Confederate flag, a symbol of hatred and violence for Black people was paraded around the Capitol building for the first time in history. Guns were drawn, tear gas was used, five people died, dozens were injured, and none of us knew how or when this would end. I am angry, I am heartbroken, but I am not shocked. As Lutherans, we are theologians of the cross. We call things what they are, instead of wrapping the truth in carefully constructed language to make ourselves feel better. We saw the evil and sin of white supremacy, of anti-Semitism, of fascism, the consequences of years of dehumanizing language, division, and increasingly clear calls to violence. We Lutherans believe that we are both saint and sinner at the same time, that each of us have within us a great capacity for both love and destruction. They say those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it but that doesn't seem accurate. If we learn history while telling ourselves it could never happen here, we will continue to be caught in cycles of hatred and violence. As a person of faith, as a faith leader, I watched in horror as people bearing signs that read Jesus saves attempted to undermine the will of the people by breaking into the Capitol. As a reader of history, I, again, was not shocked. Christianity and God have been used as props in the political machine for centuries. The often misunderstood book of Revelation, which our own Bible study group read last year, warns its readers over and over again not to be taken in by the seductiveness of power and privilege reminding us through bizarre imagery that God, not ourselves or our political leaders, is the Lord of all. We have been and continue to be living through historic and traumatic times. It is tempting to dismiss it, to perform mental gymnastics to comfort ourselves any way we can, rather than wrestling with the complexity and horror of the present. But as Christians who happen to live in the United States, this is not what we are called to do. We worship the God who was crucified and died. We are called to lament and to grieve, to use each of our God-given gifts and voices to create a world where justice and equity are realized, not just spoken of. Today, we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, where we remember that our identity is formed by the voice and call of God. The God who lived among us as a poor person of color under occupation by an empire. The God who died and rose again, because no matter how the foundations of our world may be shaken, God is still with us. Let us take a moment of silent reflection together before we begin with our service today.
thanksgiving for baptism. People of God, in the baptismal waters, you traveled with Christ from death to life. Your past, your sin, your failure, your doubt are drowned and gone here. Your fear, your confusion, your self-righteousness, your despair are washed away by grace. Your pride, your hypocrisy, and other people's opinions of you no longer define you. The Spirit lives and moves through you now, a great and joyful mystery, so you may bring love and mercy into the world as the body of Christ. Rejoice that God has named you in this baptismal grace, not by your own doing or believing, but by God's mercy alone. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of life and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. John proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens ripped apart and the Spirit descended like a dove into him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy are yours in the triune God. Amen.
The first time I fell in love, I was 12 years old. My dad took me to see the high school production of Les Miserables, and I was hooked. I listened to the music over and over again. I read the 1200 page book it was based on four times before I graduated high school. I fell in love with musicals that night and their ability to tell captivating stories in moving ways. Les Mis is a story and a musical about identity. And this is woven throughout the journey all of the characters undergo. Are we who other people say we are? How can we escape the labels that others have thrust upon us? In a world built on the backs of underpaid laborers, can true equality without rank or hierarchy ever be achieved? There is love and loss, tragedy and redemption. The story of baptism is also a story of identity. When Jesus comes up out of the waters of the Jordan River, he hears the voice of God naming him, reminding him of who he is. You are my beloved son. This is the first time that Jesus shows up in the story Mark tells. And Mark wants us to know right away who Jesus is. We are not left wondering about Jesus's identity. Our own baptism is similar. In the waters of the baptismal font, God names us. We no longer belong just to ourselves, but we belong to God. In our baptism, God comes and dwells within us. The Holy Spirit, the breath of God that hovered over the waters at creation, lives and is at work within us. The same Holy Spirit that came down at Pentecost in tongues of fire, the Spirit that spoke warnings through the prophets. Our baptism claims us as a part of the body of Christ. Whether we want it or not, we belong to one another. Not just to the people who look and speak like us, not just to the people whose political views we happen to agree with. Baptism is not simply some nice, neat little ritual where we pour a little water on a baby's head. Baptism is death and resurrection, as our funeral service proclaims. Baptism reminds us that God will not be contained by the ways we seek to cage God and use God whenever we find it convenient. In baptism, our old selves are drowned and God raises us up to a new life that is built and centered on Jesus. Although we do not start speaking in tongues or see the heavens ripped apart when we are baptized, there is a wildness to God that will not be tamed. God will not stay safely up in heaven, separated from us by a distance. God does not leave us to our own devices until we would like something to go our own way. God is on the move. The Spirit of God is present and active in the world. So how do we recognize when something has God's fingerprints, God's breath upon it? Jesus tells us that we will know the tree by the fruit it produces. Do our words, our actions, our politics, lead to the well-being and the flourishing of all people? Do they lead to a prioritizing of the least of these? Are we working toward God's new creation, where everyone's inherent worth and value are, and worth and dignity are valued? Or do we cling to harmful and deadly systems and leaders because they are familiar, because we benefit from them? The final song of Les Miserables almost always makes me cry. I first heard it 18 years ago, and it still moves me. Change comes 
not through violence, but through continual acts of love, working for the good of another. To love another person is to see the face of God. The finale of Les Mis uses images from the Old Testament prophets to paint a picture of a world that is only possible if we choose the difficult, God-given path of radical love. A path of self-sacrifice, of listening to the voices on the margins, for daring to do the right thing when it is not the easy thing. The path given to us in our baptism. The path that we follow when we listen to the voice of the Spirit within us. This is the gift. This is the responsibility of our baptism. May we all have the courage to walk this God-made path together, led by Jesus, accompanied by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of intercession. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all that God has made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers in mid-strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially those with COVID-19, that God shower compassion on them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors. May their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God, the creator, strengthen you. May Jesus, the beloved, fill you. 
And may the Holy Spirit disrupt your comfort and lead you toward peace. Amen. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.